How many of you have a fascination for all things trains? How many of us have experienced the exhilaration and adventure of a train ride? How many of us were so enthralled by the experience that we built or played with model trains, capturing and creating those experiences? Well, here in Fort Bragg, a dedicated group of eclectic community members have been hard at work designing and creating a wonderful new model train exhibit that will open this summer to the public at the Skunk Train Depot in Fort Bragg. It has painstakingly been designed to reflect and show the significant role that the train has played in Mendocino County's past and present. Welcome to Coast Currents. In the studio with me today is Tony Phillips. And Tony is the historian for the Mendocino Coast Railway and Historic Society. Tony, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. We're well, very pleased to be here. It's nice to have you with us. Now, let me start off by asking you to tell our audience a little bit about yourself and how did you come to be in Mendocino County? I'm 70 years old. We came here in the year 2000. Uh, taking somewhat of an early retirement. Uh, both Sarah, my wife, and I have been CPAs at the higher end of most of, of uh, American business, uh -huh. and we were burned out. Um, Sarah's mother came here um, many years ago and was just entranced by Mendocino and Fort Bragg. And she came home, we lived in Kenfield in the Bay Area, uh -huh. and she came home one day, or home being Kenfield, and said, when we die, sell the house and go and live in Fort Bragg. And so she died, we sold the house, and we're here in Fort Bragg. And no regrets? Absolutely none. She was, the, she was an incredible lady and she had, a, she had a stamp pat. Excellent. So how did you become interested, or have you always been interested in trains? Always interested in the sense that my grandmother's house the uh, train from Brighton to Littlehampton literally ran at the bottom of the garden. Uh -huh. Grandma would tell you the time of the train, the time of the day by the trains. And when I became an auditor in North America, uh, it was a question of uh, in the evenings, what did you do? You know, did you go out and drink every evening? And I never was a really great drinker. Mm -hmm. So I started buying um, model train kits, which easily fit inside an attache case and building model, uh, you know, models of trains and giving them away. And after a while I realized I might be better off if I kept the damn things and <laughs> built my own model railroad. So since about 1975, I guess, I had in one form or another a railroad. And when I came here, I found out that there was already a railroad club. And so I joined. Oh, great. So the, the Mendocino Coast Model Railway and Historical Society um, is a 501c3, correct. correct? Tell us a little bit about the organization and, and what exactly uh, you do. We're, as, um, we're not very well organized. I think that's fairly true of at least most of the smaller train clubs that I've run into. Mm -hmm. um, we're kind of more like a herd of cats being corralled into doing things. Um, we've had two layouts prior to this one. Um, both, I th uh, the first one never got too far. The second one we actually completed and we had a lot of interest in. Uh -huh. So when we had the opportunity from Mr. Panoli at the um, skunk train to take up premises in the skunk yard, we just absolutely couldn't believe our luck. There aren't many of us currently, there are 18. Most of the work probably gets done by eight or 10. Mm -hmm. And um, we're very lucky in having a real plural, plural, can't get the word, a real mix of people to do the work. We've got a Hollywood scene painter. Uh, we've got people who've done a lot of construction. We've got lawyers. We've got people who are skilled in um, electronics. So we just have a, a really nice group. We'd love to have more people come in and help, mm -hmm. but um, we're hoping once we open up the train to the public, it'll attract more people to the club. So what skills are you looking for to, to kind of It's an interesting the... hobby. Basically, you can, you know, if, if you have some skill, it can be utilized. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it's just like, you know, my skills are in writing and computer, you know, utilizing computers. And I designed the current layout, but it took over a hundred iterations, you know, all of which were shared with the members before 
the herd of cats decided that we, you know, we've got something that was worth having. Right. So tell us what is special about this layout that you're creating at the Skunk Depot. It's very unusual. If you go from Walala to Rockport, I hate to say it, but you would never know that this was a major source of logging. Um, after the 1906 earthquake in uh, San Francisco, uh, the, the Mendocino Coast was a huge source of the timber that rebuilt San Francisco. Uh -huh. But there are no museums. You can go into the museum at Elk from 11 to 1 on Saturdays and Sundays, mm -hmm. and that's it. The Kelly House really has nothing about uh, the logging industry. The guest house across the road here has very little about the logging industry. So we've, we're building a railroad of dioramas of the logging industry as it was around 1920 to 1940, and connecting them is a G-scale layout. In addition to that, we've got two main lines, which in our minds are not the logging railways, but the main lines, just as the uh, skunk train connected to the Northwest Pacific in Eureka. So we've got two main lines, each about 1.7 miles in scale length. So anybody who has got a train, a G-scale train, you know, will find that we can accommodate it on our main, on our main lines. It may not be true on the, what we call the mill lines, but you can certainly accommodate them on the main lines. G-scale comes in uh, three flavors. Uh -huh. uh, the first flavor is what we call through the rails, just like your old Lionel, get picked up the electricity. The second flavor is battery powered. This is much nicer because it means you don't have to clean the tracks constant problem if you're running through the rails. And the third um, high end, is that the right word, is real live steam G-scale engines. Okay. And we have about 20 of those in the club. Really? And they are totally fascinating. I could tell you that in my retirement, I could sit and watch a model train steam power go round and round and round <laughs> for days on end. Now, will you intersperse them, the different engines at different times, or will they all be going, or...? Uh, for when we're open to the public on a day-to-day -day basis, we will just have the uh, through the rails and the battery powers running. Mm -hmm. um, we need to take a bit more precautions because live steam is live steam. Right. So um, we, when we run what we call steam up days, then we clearly you know, you know, make sure that we've got everybody in the right place and so on and so forth. But we have lots and lots of fun with the steam up days. Great. And, you know, when are you going to be opening this? And we, uh, um, Mr. Pinoli has given us the nod to, to open up on May 25th. Wow. And we will be open all the time that the skunk train is open. That's okay. the understanding that, uh, the, of the deal that we have with Mr. Pinoli. Great. Um, you pay when you come in, talk to the depot. They will tell you what the prices are. That's not our um, part of it per se. You know, we will get a small contribution from the skunk train um, to pay for the maintenance of, because if you run the trains for day in, day out, they will wear out. And mm. we have probably $25,000 worth of trains over there. Right. So is, is this something that people who have purchased a ticket for a ride on the skunk train, they'll be able to... Absolutely. To, to, this is to be incorporated in that. Yep. And then if, if like locals or visitors that aren't taking the train at that time, if they wanted to uh, come and view the railway, is, the, is can they yeah, buy a separate ticket for they that? They can, absolutely. They just go into the depot. Um, um, it's Mr. Pinoli's call as to what the prices are. He has told us it will be very, very reasonable because three things. One, he wants to get more local people involved in the skunk train, mm -hmm. and he sees us as a, an attraction. Uh, secondly, um, it means that people who you know, don't want to ride on the train you know, can, can do so. And thirdly, we're hoping to in, in, uh, entice a lot of school children, bus tours, if that's the right word, both to the skunk train and to the model railway as a means of telling them the history of the Mendocino Coast. Right, and you have a v an excellent website that's very informative and fun to navigate. Yes, it's right on your shirt, but if, if people can't read your shirt, would you actually tell the yes, audience? Yes, www.mendocinehistory.org. 
Okay. Did I get it right? I think I did. That's okay. And um, how can our viewers, if they wish to become involved with the organization itself or just learn a little bit more about the train history, is there some way to... Well, first of all, the uh, website has a tremendous amount of background for each of the dioramas that we have created. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in knowing, for instance, you know how many peers there were that took the lumber out of the... Uh, lumber mills up and down the coast, you'll find it on the website. Uh, we, we attract about between five and six million hits a year. Wow. So we're fairly popular in the sense of people who come to us for a lot of history. I get a lot of emails about people who believe that I personally knew their great-great-grandfather when he worked <laughs> at the Albion Mill. Oh. And I hate to tell you, I'm not that old. Yeah. <laughs> so. Tony, tell me a little bit about who's currently in your organization. Well, there's me, obviously, and I'm uh, the general factotum, which means that if nobody was willing to do it, give it to Tony is the <laughs> answer. Um, with the, the skills we have, we've got lawyers, we've got um, mechanical engineers, electrical, electrical engineers, we have a, a, a a painter who worked in Hollywood doing the scenes. Uh, he, if you go into the layout, you'll see the results of his works. Right. We've got people who live locally and are very skilled with their hands, you know, building things. Nearly uh, all the structures in the um, on the layout are built of wood, and the wood we have salvaged. Um, for instance, if you had a redwood fence and you were taking it down, you'd probably find me on your doorstep. We take it and, and mill it down to strips and we turn it into um, buildings. Our mill is about three foot, three foot high and about three foot square and it took about 700 hours to build. We have a scale model of the Pudding Creek trestle mm -hmm. and it's 16 feet long. Wow. It's pretty accurate, it has 1600 bolts in it. How do I know? Because I put them there. <laughs> and. Um, we have an A-frame bridge. Again, there were 37 A-frame bridges on the run from Fort Bragg to uh, Willits. None anymore. Uh, arsonists decided they were a good thing to have. Oh. And this poor old skunk train had to replace them all. Oh, dear. But all the buildings and, that we have in there are uh, hand-built uh, from scratch so that you know, we know that they'll fit. We wanted to have, build a replica of the pier. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that the pier here in Fort Bragg was nearly 700 feet long. Really? And up until 1948, much of the lumber that left the Union Lumber Company, as it was then, mill, went out by a uh, schooner. Um, so to the 696 feet turns into 26 scale feet. And I was adamant when we started the layout that somehow or other I would be allowed to build a pier 26 feet long. <laughs> but the building's only 55 feet long. <laughs> so I was told I could go from here to the door, and that was about nine feet. And that oh, was, all I, was all I was allowed. But it's a nice little pier, but it's not quite the pier that I, the magnificent structure that I really thought we well, could Well, maybe use. that's to come. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to talk to Mr. Pinoli about more space. Absolutely. He, well, he does have a few more buildings on that property. Well, I, well yes. <laughs> Uh, so tell me, is this an interactive attraction? Yes, in, yes and no. Okay. It is interactive in as much as we hope in the future that people can bring their own trains and run them in mm -hmm. that sense. Yes, we will have buttons to push once we're 100% you know, operating. Um, a model railroad is never finished. I mean, you go to any of the really great ones and it's never finished. And so, you know, we have all sorts of plans about how to um, mechanize, if that's the right word. We want to have the mill really drag logs out of the mill pond. Uh, yes, we've got a mill pond, and yes, it holds water, but we don't have the wherewithal for it to drag the So you the really out. are recreating um, the systems of operation that existed on the coast then and for this, for this layout. Yes. So it's and going to be a fascinating glimpse back into the glorious past of uh, Fort Bragg then. Yeah, I, you know, I hesitate to use the word glorious. Um, it provided a lot of work. It was uh -huh. extraordinarily hard. It was extraordinarily dangerous. And um, we were fortunate. One of the old the founder members of the club 
Hank Simonson. He um, worked in the, you know, in the down and dirties out in, in the woods. Mm -hmm. And he would tell me, I mean, um, 100 degrees, 110 degrees, peeling logs is a bloody hard way to make a living. Right. The loggers, interestingly, if, if you came onto a logging camp and you were fat, then they immediately knew that you didn't work out in the uh, forest. Mm. A logger would consume nearly 6,000 calories a day. Wow. The first thing he did when he came in from the woods was to take off his shirt and wash it because if he didn't, it would literally be so stiff from the sweat, it would stand up the next day. Oh my. So uh, it, it was a very hard business. Uh -huh. And what's interesting about the, the history of the coast is that the first loggers were from Sweden and Finland. Mm -hmm. and there's still a strong Finnish presence in Fort Bragg. They were followed um, by the Italians who tended to be the bankers and the um, shopkeepers and also tended to be the brothel keepers. Mm -hmm. um, and then came the Chinese. The Chinese built the tunnels and they were very good uh, mechanically. And in and around Mendocino, they, were much, they grew much of the lettuce, tomatoes type stuff. And it was very, very high quality from what I can figure out. And so, you know, the melange of people that came here is all part of the history. And that's one of the things we're hoping to show as time goes on is, you know, what, who influenced what uh, in terms of, you know, what we have on the layout. I'm hoping that our layout becomes a big draw for people coming to Fort Bragg. Um, we have already been in two major um, railway magazines with our previous layout. Okay. And um, I think our layout is good enough that we'll get coverage in the two biggest model railway magazines, and that will bring people into town. What will also bring people in town is when we have steam ups and people come in from outside with their steam engines. Mm. Um, there's a place called Miniature Wunderland in Hamburg. Um, it, it has, um, it's on four stories of a warehouse. It's one contiguous uh, HO layout. It attracts over six million people a year. Wow. When our, we're not going to be that big. But we have high <laughs> hopes that, you know, uh, we think model railways are a big um, kick and people, you know, they're, they're non-frightening, you know, um, that people can learn from them. So we're hoping that we become another major attraction for the town. Um, you know, at holidays, we'll run Thomas the Tank Engine trains, you know, to mm -hmm. bring the kids in. And um, it's, um, you know, the layout is designed so that there's a lot of Kodachrome, Kodak moments. You know, that you, we've arranged the scenery in such a way that, you know, you look through here and you can see this, that and the other. So um, I think, you know, knowing Fort Bragg and knowing that it's struggling hard in terms of visitor attractions, I think once the word's out and we get our press releases out and get articles written and uh, published, then we'll, we'll bring our own people in and hopefully help the skunk train in terms of selling more tickets for them. And I can't underestimate Mr. Pinoli, the owner of the uh, skunk train, has been absolutely, unbelievably, incredibly positive and helpful and far beyond what a landlord should have been, I think. And um, thank you very much to him. Because without him, we would, you know, it's not possible to rent a space of this size with 16 um, members. And, you know, unless you've got somebody who's very wealthy who's prepared to back you. And we don't have that. So um, we are indebted to him very hugely. Great. And I think Fort Bragg is in more way, in a lot of ways also. Yes, I was a bit sad to, to see in the, our local paper the other day. I didn't think the skunk got the, the mention that it should have done. Um, you know, Robert's a skunk train brings in, I don't know what the exact numbers are, but I'm guessing between 35 and 40,000 visitors a year. That's a fair number of people coming in Fort Bragg. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they don't just, because of the way that the schedules run, they have to come here the day before and stay overnight to, you know, ride the train. So it benefits the whole community, definitely. We do have another, if you ride the, the train, the skunk train out uh -huh. to Norseburg, Right. You'll find another one of our layouts running at Norseburg. Oh, okay. Uh, it doesn't run very far, but it, it's there, and the Norseburg people are really happy with it. That one's battery operated, so they just turn the switch and she runs round and round. And I've been out a couple of times, and 
every little kid that's on the trains just stands there and watches mesmerized as the, the train trolls its way around. And we recently fitted the sound on it, so it actually goes, sounds like a steam engine oh, as well excellent. as it really, really is. Good. So, Tony, talking of uh, Chief Skunk, Mr. Panoli, we were able to uh, <laughs> track him down recently, and he has a, a little words of wisdom for us. It's really great to have the Model Railroad Club here housed in the carpenter's barn at the skunk train. I think the synergy of having little trains and big trains coexist on the same property is an amazing feat. Um, the Model Railroad Club brings a, a level of energy that sometimes can't be exerted uh, by that of a big train. And so having uh, them here and having eight or nine trains zip around the tracks at any given time, going from the inside of the building to the outside of the building, really is very fascinating. And it brings the passion that stirred within us as a child to life. And that's what's important. All right, Tony, I want to thank you so much for joining us and telling us about this wonderful, exciting new attraction coming to the city of Fort Bragg. We hope our viewers will go out and look at it, view it and support it and share it with your friends. And we'll look forward to seeing you again on another edition of Coast Currents. Oh,